Now, the legalization of medical marijuana in South Africa, the debate that's hotting up from all angles in this country, last month in honor of IP Member of Parliament Mario Oriani Ambrosini, who hosted a discussion on this very topic. What followed was a passionate debate that not even we expected. We were approached by the concerned youth of Southern Africa who wanted to join us on the show to, well, to talk about their obligation to stop the legalization of marijuana in South Africa. We then also invited the other side of the argument, Mr. William Wallace from Lobby Group Below the Line. The debate had a huge response on social media and spread like wildfire, well, globally. But before we continue with today's discussion, let's just have a look back at this previous debate. We want to engage with you. We want the same thing. We want to lower youth use, but we do not believe that it is helping the youth by simply arresting them and throwing them in jail. Remember, it is not cannabis that is criminalized. It is the use of cannabis. And we are criminalizing people. When someone comes to you, when a young man comes to you and says, I'm having a problem with Dacha, do you send him to jail? We don't send them to jail. Then you already concede that you agree that prohibition is not the answer, because Mr. Because our aim is to help them. As is ours. It is you helping them by giving them Dacha. No, by not throwing them in prison. By not throwing them in prison. This is what I want to tell you. There's so many women in Durban that are crying tears because from these children that are using Dacha, they've sold everything, every furniture in their houses, I think you're including talking about beds. Uh, if, including, if we can, if we can, if we can get, come back to order, yes. I don't think that it's proven fact that Dacha makes people aggressive. It is proven. It's come actually to the opposite. Center. It's actually come the opposite. Come to my centre. What it about has alcohol? Maybe what, you. what are your views it's on alcohol? It's the same. It's the same. Dacha and alcohol so is the same. So you want Dacha banned, alcohol banned. Both. What about sugar? It kills more people than Dacha. Sugar is healthier. Take coffee without sugar and you tell me what is the taste. Well, it was a passionate debate, and that is still available on our digital platform. That's on our YouTube channel on demand. Just put in Dacha debate, it'll pop up. It's been around the world the last couple of weeks. Very interesting. Now, today in Johannesburg, we have Myrtle Clark, the director of Fields of Green for All, a South African cannabis non-profit company, and Jules Stobbs, the director of social activism at Fields of Green for All. Together, they are known affectionately in the media as the Dacha couple. And in Durban, from Doctors for Life International, we are joined by spokesperson uh, Mr. Johan Klaassen in the black jacket on the left and Dr. Willem Flock, a special in internal med specialist in internal medicine on the right. Good morning, uh, uh, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to start in Johannesburg and just get some reaction. Uh, we saw the debate that we had previously. I'm sure that you've watched it in full on, on YouTube. If I can start with you, Jules, just give us your views on this reaction. It's a very passionate debate, isn't it, Ivan? <laughs> it is a polarized debate. It is the most polarized debate on the planet at the moment. And that young lady got a bit hot under the collar because it is a very hot subject. Let's go, uh, let's go to Jan Klaassen in Durban. Uh, just tell us, uh, just tell us quickly, uh, Johan, your views on the previous debate uh, at the face of prohibition, as it's called now. Well, maybe I can start off with just saying what is Doctors for Life's official position on this debate, and I think that will maybe clarify everything. Um, Doctors for Life is obviously against the legalization of Dacha, the plant or cannabis sativa, uh, the plant as a whole, because people want to smoke it. And the reason is actually quite clear. From a medical point of view, it is extremely harmful. It's a psychoactive drug. It's neurotoxic. In other words, it damages the brain. It causes dam brain damage um, in numerous parts of the brain. And one of the most damning evidence recently, there's an explosion of studies showing, and these are published on the internet uh, that even the public can get hold of them on a website called PubMed, which is the largest biomedical facility in the world. Uh, there's an explosion of studies showing that cannabis causes or is related to schizophrenia. And that's one of the reasons why the UK, um, who downgraded cannabis in 2005, actually upgraded it again in 2008. I want and to... the reason was because of that factor. And um, even one of the major newspapers that was driving the whole downgrading of cannabis in UK wrote an open apology to the public for their 
uh, part that they played in actually downgrading the drug in the in the start. If, if before um, we carry on, we have to before consider we carry this. on, uh, yeah. Mr. Klassen, can I ask you then, your opinion as a movement is purely on medicinal grounds? Is that accurate? Well, it's not probably not completely accurate, but that is our main drive. We are a scientific organization, and that is one of the main reasons. In fact, if it had no, you're probably quite correct, if it had no side effects and it had no harmful effects, we wouldn't have been sitting here. Okay, let's come up to Johannesburg now. Uh, Myrtle, uh, are you going to respond to, to the views by Mr. Klassen in Durban? Yes, I certainly am, and I'd just like to clarify that we're from Fields of Green for All, um, a cannabis legalization non-profit company. Um, I'd just like, like to ask the good doctor, I have been uh, using cannabis almost daily for the last 30 years. Um, I have achieved all sorts of things in my life, inc including an honors degree. Um, I run my organization. I worked as an art director in the movie and TV industry before this. I've never been without a job. We own property. Um, we have this organization that has tens of thousands of members. And if a cannabis was was going to cause me brain damage, I really don't think that from a personal point of view that I would be sitting here today. I really don't think I would. And I don't think that our organization would have members uh, who are academics, who are scientists, who are doctors, and who are also general members of the public who find that their use of cannabis not only enhances their lives, but also um, um, adds to their general sense of well-being. And I think that uh, Julian will, will answer your question about the, the schizophrenia. The schizophrenia problem is um, it's, it's, it's rife in the press at the moment. And the prohibition lo lobby has been trying to pin the schizophrenia tail on the cannabis donkey yeah. for 150 years. And it's still not set in stone. 150 years ago, the British Army had seven different types of cannabis psychosis and they tried their hardest to pin schizophrenia on the use of cannabis in 2009 in, in uh, the UK the biggest study ever on schizophrenia 600,000 people eh? yeah. over nine years they found that no percentage whatsoever had any form of schizophrenia as a result of using cannabis and in fact schizophrenia generally in the UK is dropping not increasing which is more than you can say for the use of the cannabis plant Dr. Flock, if I can come to you in Durban, what is your response then to what, uh, uh, what Jules is putting on the table? Well, I have to admit that um, you are speaking of anecdotal medication here. You are speaking of one single individual that claims not to have seen the harmful effects of cannabis. And I think one has to be careful for saying that. You know, with any medication that we use, um, you can, you can only see side effects in about half the patients at most. It would not be applicable to everyone. And for an ideal drug, you look at 20%. Now, just because somebody says that he smoked pot for 30 years and had no side effects, well, first, that needs to be verified. Um, and secondly, I think that's a very dangerous statement to make. Let's... Let's move on, and, and we, we talk about the downside, but what about the benefits? What are you saying? as the, the Dache couple, what are the benefits and why should it be legalized? Well, we don't actually dwell on the benefits of the plant. The Fields of Green for All has been put together to discuss the harms of prohibition. You can cherry pick as many studies as you like to find out exactly which answer you want to whichever question. You will find a statistic in a government report that says this thing might give you schizophrenia. But there are plenty of uh, anecdotal evidence that we get as the Dache couple from schizophrenics themselves who use the plant to bring themselves towards themselves. They use it as a medication. Let's go to Durban. I want to talk about this a little bit and I, I want to talk about the prohibition uh, scenario. Dr. Flock, is Dacha more harmful than sugar in your opinion in the world that we live in today? Well, most most uh, uh, definitely it's more harmful than sugar. Of course, we use sugar in moderation, and, um, but I still condone its use. Um, the same for cannabis, it's definitely more harmful. And yeah, I will speak from, from practical experience in clinical practice. 
Um, I certainly see patients that have issues with psychiatry uh, conditions becoming worse on the medication, um, on smoked cannabis. And they certainly fill up the hospitals that we have to stabilize them. And I really struggle to believe the statement that people do not get psychotic on smoking cannabis. If I can go to Johan Klaassen and ask him about, about this analogy, are we not in danger of becoming a nanny state where we tell people what tea they can drink, what they can eat, what they can smoke, who they can associate with? Surely that is starting to infringe on, on people's basics, basic rights within our constitution. I think, first of all, you have to understand what human rights actually in the Constitution means. Um, that doesn't mean that you can just do whatever you like, because if that was true, then a guy could do, uh, he could commit murder or anything. Uh, now but surely we, can't, surely we example, can't equate smoking Dachau with murder. Surely we can't equate yeah, Dachau with murder. I know, that's why murder. I just told you. I said, <laughs> that's why I just said, I know that's an extreme example, but I'm trying to make a point here. The fact is that you cannot just do what you want. Um, the Constitution has to weigh up the harmful effects that it will have on other people. And quite frankly, with Dacha, it's very clear, and science shows it, regardless of what the, the small lobbying groups and, and uh, pro-Dacha groups are trying to uh, convince the people of. Um, but with you calling it a nanny state, remember the government has that responsibility to keep the citizens safe. And they're doing it on many grounds and many different fields. Um, with policies. This is just one of them, but take laws uh, in consideration like traffic laws. Can You've got a speed limit. You can't just say, well, people are not adhering to the speed limit and therefore we've got to maybe just abolish it. But Mr. Same Klaassen, with stop streets because people are going to break it whenever they want to. Sorry, I'm not finished yet. Um, and another good example is seat belts. The government has weighed up <laughs> The, the, uh, the potential harm, and they've looked at the evidence that wearing a seat belt is, is safer, and therefore they actually force people to wear that, and the same with helmets. But prohibition is, is much more dangerous. You're putting children, 13, 14, 15-year-olds, in the hands of drug dealers, people who are out there who are selling drugs and who can then introduce them to harder drugs. Surely that is much more dangerous. No, look, I think you are not quite realistic if you think legalizing it is going to make the situation better. In Colorado, where they've recently legalized the drug Dacha, they have found that there was a huge increase in emergency admissions in hospital, not from older people, but from children. And the reason was that many of them were getting it from their parents because the parent is maybe doped on a trip, doesn't think clearly, and the children get hold of their drugs. And it's not just with cannabis, you find that with many of the other drugs as well. So I think it's quite a ridiculous thing to think that we're going to help the children by legalizing it, making, making it more freely available. Um, it, uh, surely it's much easier to control. To but Mr. Klaassen, I'd like to come to Johannesburg and, and get the Dacha couple to respond to this. We're talking about international benchmarking. You're talking about uh, children in hospital, more children in hospital. Uh, what are your views on you that? Know, when, when we talk about legalization, we're talking about legalized regulation. This is not a free-for-all. This doesn't mean everybody is allowed or should or is condoned to smoke or use this plant. We're talking about a legalized, regulated system, much the same as, say, alcohol and tobacco. We don't like to make these distinctions, but if alcohol and tobacco, known killers in society, are condoned in society, and cannabis has, ne has yet to kill somebody on its own, then why don't we tax and regulate it the same as alcohol? Because we do that very successfully in society. As Mr. Wallace said in your discussion last week, it was easier for him as a teenager to get a, a, a bag of scaife at a bus stop than it was to get a bottle of brandy in a bottle store. Uh, yes, yes. I'd just like to add that, um, and emphasize the, the point that Julian has just made, that nobody has ever died from cannabis anywhere in the world. No death certificate has ever been signed with the reason for death being given as cannabis. And I also think, just to relate to Dr. Clarkson's comment, is that I don't think anybody has ever been put in jail for, wearing a, for not wearing a seat belt. And we have to get back to the point here. Our inbox is full every single day with people whose lives have been harmed by the prohibition of this plant. 
It is my right to put into my body whatever I choose to do. Even if you had to hypothetically say that cannabis gave you schizophrenia or cannabis gave you lung can cancer, it is my right to take that chance. It is much more dangerous to go skydiving, but it is legal. It is much more dangerous to get into a 16-seater taxi in the morning, but it is legal. Final, uh, final, final arguments coming up. Uh, if I can get final remarks from, from both you gentlemen in, in Durban quickly. Let's start with uh, Dr. Flock. Mm, okay. Well, I definitely have to say something about nobody has died from cannabis. Uh, you must remember of this whole panel, it's me filling in the death certificates. Now, we had a similar discussion about this when it came to HIV. Also, nobody died of HIV 10 years ago, but once we started to document this and put it on paper, then the statistics showed differently. Now, we are not going to do that for cannabis on the, on the moment because of the history that the patient is not forthcoming. So therefore, I think it's a very dangerous statement to make again to say that nobody has died from cannabis. And it also depends on how you count. Um, if you are so simply counting somebody that smokes and kill over and die, versus somebody that's under the influence and kill other people, uh, versus somebody that dies in an accident, I think that still needs to be clarified. Mr. Klassen, if you can give us your final remarks in uh, 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, yeah, maybe just on the point that they made about the human right. Remember, there has been a court case in 2002 where the uh, Rastafarian uh, law, law student wanted it to be legalized as well. And Doctors for Life got involved with that court case in 2002. And the Constitutional Court uh, decided that it should remain I illegal. So this decision actually has been made based on the Constitution. Um, and the facts, the overwhelming facts of the medical uh, or the, the harmfulness of this drug was what they had to take into account. Um, secondly, 30 I seconds, can maybe sir. just say again that this is a hallucinogen and people get addictive to drugs. And quite frankly, if they say that it's just a weekend drug and they're just their own business, well, they are bringing a legal they are bringing a trade of Dacha to their corner, to their street, and that's where other children can get hold of it as well. Thank and you very much, second, Mr. Klaas, and thank you for joining us. You've run out of, Colorado. We've run out of time, unfortunately. Okay. That's Doctors for Life okay. coming to you from our Durban studios. And then final remarks I'd like to give to the Dacha couple here in Johannesburg. If, you can, if I can start with you, uh, Myrtle, just to give us final remarks on what you've just heard. Yes, final remarks on uh, the case of Gareth Prince in the Constitutional uh, Court in 2002. The reason uh, why it, it wasn't successful is that um, uh, Mr. Prince's uh, arguments were not enforceable because he was appealing for the reform of cannabis laws for the Rastafarian community. You can't just appeal for one sector of the community. This has to be for all South Africans. And that is why Fields of Green for All is called For All because it is for all South Africans, whether it's for medicinal, industrial, or recreational use. <laughs> it goes round in circles here, but it's gone round in circles for 50 years, and it will continue to go round in circles with the same objections, the same positive statements, the same negative statements. Yeah. The bottom line is, if you look at the harms of these substances in society, and you make a... a, a a table of what harms what. If we are making punitive decisions on people's liberties dependent on the harm these substances do, then people should be going to jail for their tobacco and their alcohol use. That's because it. the cannabis plant is number eight or nine on the scale of harms worldwide. Well, that's very interesting. It's a debate we're going to continue. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Of course, uh, the directors of Fields of Green for All, Myrtle Clark and Julian Stubbs, that was the director of social activism.